Alright, take the money in it. I keep the coins. I need the coins. Bro, okay. The very disturbing surveillance footage uh, from Johnny Wynn's smoke shop out in uh, Las Vegas there um, showed him, the smoke shop owner, uh, retaliating and uh, responding to a couple of, uh, of would be robbers in his uh, shop there. And as if you couldn't tell from the violence there, he was stabbed multiple times, at least that last culprit there was stabbed multiple times. There's been debate now over whether or not this was the right thing to do. And that's where the interesting part about this whole thing goes outside of the stabbing that was involved there. Uh, but before we get into those details and back and forth and debate that's happening, it was a lot more full uh, of video to this and how they approached and everything that happened. Let's watch the full thing that happened. Why are you guys wearing masks like that? Say what? Can you guys just leave? Nah. Jacob. Can I just get the. Alright, take the money in it. I keep the coins. I need the coins. Bro, okay. So as you saw at the end of that there, um, the uh, there's the call in the adolescent there on the floor was asking, uh, begging for his life, don't let me die, this wasn't my idea. And also as he's being stabbed, he goes, I'm being stabbed, Oh man, stop please, I'm gonna die, I'm dead, I'm dead. You can hear the panic in his voice. This is where the debate then builds this out. Let's get to a few more details of how this all happened and exactly what was going through that store, uh, that owner's mind. So this is on August 3rd and again, this guy's name was Johnny Wynn, the owner of that show. He's only 22 years old. He was captured on film stabbing one of these three juveniles as they described, who tried to rob his store, the Smoke Strom, uh, Smoke Shop. In West Sahara in Las Vegas. So, according to Wynn, two masked individuals entered that shop while another stood by the door at around three o'clock in the afternoon. He says, At first, I thought they were normal customers. Then I realized that they had ski masks on. I had to assume that they had a firearm, so I just wanted to make sure I could protect myself. He also explained that while he did not see any firearm, he reacted because he couldn't take that chance. Again, he says, I remember them saying, Please don't let me die. Uh, this was uh, quoted by the New York Post and he talked to them as well. And he said he was sorry. And by that point, he had taken his mask off himself. I was trying to get on the phone with the police when he was trying to talk to me. I just ran and I wanted to make sure the police and ambulance would get there, uh, get here on time. Now lastly, authorities have since arrested these other juveniles involved in this botched robbery while the stabbed teenager was taken to a hospital. The condition of that guy um, that was begging for his life is still unknown. I've looked every day since then, uh, Farron. I still haven't seen any updates on how he is. I guess uh, that's one of those updates that generally doesn't come, especially when you're one of these folks attempting a robbery like this. But there's been some vigorous debate. Uh, of course, it's been posted damn near everywhere. And everyone's talking about, hey, this guy should go to jail. Talking about uh, um, um, with Johnny Wynn there, who's the owner of this store. Uh, or these guys had it, they effed around and they found out. Um, uh, well, I mean, he defended himself, that's fine. But then again, he took it too far with the, that many stab wounds. There's so many different narratives here. Uh, I, I'd like for us to adjudicate this because we're gonna be the judge and jury here. What's your thoughts, bro? Uh, it, honestly, it's a very difficult, you know, uh, situation. I, I think for both of the people involved, did the kid deserve to get stabbed that many times? Absolutely not. Was the shop owner probably coursing with adrenaline and acting? You know, acting before I think his brain could even understand what he was doing. Probably so, right? When the when the young kid you know jumps the counter, that's probably when those those uh, adrenaline starts pumping. He doesn't know what's going to happen next. But then again, you have him on the ground at that point, and then it continues. And at that point, you've overstepped, right? You you've taken this too far. You're the aggressor at that point, you know. And at one point, you he drags him to the door 
of the store. And this was after the kid was already clearly incapacitated. So, you know, I. I, I struggle with that a lot because again, I, I do not think that kid deserved that. But from a prosecutorial standpoint, I don't think you can hit the shop owner really with anything legally speaking. Um, so I would I, think so. That's and I'm, I'm glad you came up with the legal approach because again, um, the debate is whether or not like this guy was right to do it and all that, but legally versus what you think maybe would have done or morally. Because again, he's standing there over him and then he said he's trying to rush and get the ambulance and police there. So it seemed like a flip, a switch was flipped there after he counterattacked and said, oh, because again, who knows for sure if this kid's, I don't know how old he is, they say adolescent teen. I'm gonna, I keep throwing 15, 16 in there just because he seemed like a little dude. <laughs> so, um, but who knows before that, that's why there's masks on their face and eventually took it off to reveal, hey, I'm just a kid, it wasn't my idea, all this stuff. But you don't know that stuff beforehand. And there's something, this is a personal thing for me, there's something about stabbing that's a little bit skin crawling for me. And you gotta also think about the trauma that Johnny Wynn's gonna be going through. I mean, you stab the guy multiple times because you don't know what's gonna happen. You know, if you're about to die, all these things just, it's a split second decision. This is traumatic for him too. Um, so honestly, there's no winners here. I, I, I doubt they're gonna have this guy go into prison or anything for his retaliation. But it's, it's, a, it's a horrible thing to have to live with, especially if not, we still don't know what happened to the guy if he did die. I, I, for some reason, I doubt it. but. I mean, he hit him in some pretty good spots. It was neck and back and leg and torso. It was, it was well, some choice spots. And, and you know, when you think about it too, watching through the video, um, he, the shop owner was obviously very calm in the beginning yeah, too. Like, absolutely. hey, you look, just take the cash. I need to actually need the coins you know, for the register. Um, he he was understanding to the point where it's like, okay, look, I'm being robbed. I'm just going to cooperate. I've got insurance, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then the jumping of the counter again. I think that's like you're saying. That's when the switch went off. And then clearly the switch went the other way when he realized, oh my God, what have I done? And especially I think the kid taking off the mask. It's at that point it hits him. I'm stabbing a kid. Right. I, I, I'm only 22 myself, and I'm stabbing another kid. I, I that that's going to be horrific. It's going to be horrific, obviously, for the for the individual that was stabbed. You know, I, I'm I'm hoping he is okay and that he has pulled through this. Um, it, you know, it's again. That's why petty crime has so many big, I think, responsibilities and consequences after for everyone. A absolutely. So, you know, and again, the gun issue, we don't know if he has a gun. That goes back to the gun culture here in the United States. We didn't have that, maybe a different situation. We assume everyone does.